Boston Media Awards, a presentation to the faculty, staff, and parents of Flatwoods Elementary. During this presentation, I'll be going over various types of literary awards, the origins and purpose of those awards, and the eligibility criteria for the awards. The first award is the John Newberry Award. This is awarded annually to the author of the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children. That word distinguished can be kind of vague, so they have a list of criteria online that can apply. Here are some examples of winners of that past award. We have Free Water, The Last Quintista, and When You Trap a Tiger. The next award is the Randolph Caldecott Medal. This award is for distinguished illustrations of children's books. This is restricted to U.S. citizens published during the last year and must be an original work. The focus of this word is on the artistry of a book. Here we can see Randolph Caldecott himself in the center, and on the left we actually see one of his books for which he was the illustrator and the primary character. We can also see the 2022 winner, which is a book called Watercrest by Andrea Wang with illustrations by Jason Chin. The next award is the Michael L. Prince Award. This is awarded annually to honor the best book written for teens based entirely on literary merit. The book may be fiction, nonfiction, poetry, or an anthology. It must have been designated by its publisher as being a young adult book. Here we have some examples of books that have received this award. All My Rage by Sabata Here, Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully, and Everything Sad is Untrue, A True Story by Daniel Nayer. The next award is the Coretta Scott King Award. This is awarded annually to outstanding African-American authors and illustrators of books for children and young adults that demonstrate an, ap an appreciation of African-American culture and universal human values. This does have an extensive list of required criteria to receive this award, but the, it's all about encouraging artistic expression of the Black experience through literature and the graphic arts. Again, we're able to see last year's award included free water which I particularly like this award because it does encapsulate so much of that African-American history and experience. And Free Water tells the story of two enslaved children's escape from a plantation in their search for freedom. Uh, Frank Morrison was the illustrator winner for this work in the book, Standing in the Need of Prayer. You can see those gorgeous illustrations right in the center. And then we have an honorary title, Star Child by E.B. Zoboy. I appreciate that this... This award has both an author winner, an illustrator winner, and some honorary awards. The next award is the Schneider Family Honor Book Award. This is awarded for books on expression of disability or experience. They have awards for younger, middle, and teens. Here we have uh, one of each of the different winners. On the left, we have the teen winner, The Words We Keep. In the middle, we have middle grade winner, Wild Oak. And to the right, we have the children's winner, which is Listen by Evelyn Glennie. This is a deaf girl and how she had changed percussion. The next book is the Giesel Honor Books, named for Dr. Seuss. This is exclusively for beginning reader books. Eligibility for this award has a list of criteria for being considered a beginning reader book. In the middle, we see Dr. Seuss himself. On the left, we have last year's winner, I Did It, by Michael Emberley. And to the right, we have the 2022 winner, Fox at Night, by Corey R. Tabor. The next award is the Margaret A. Edwards Award. This is awarded to an individual's body of work over a period of time and their contribution to young adult literature. This is an emphasis on self-awareness or discovery in young adult audiences. So here we have those individual authors who have been awarded. The 2023 winner was Jason Reynolds. The 2014 winner is Marcus Suzak. And then another noted author that we can probably all recognize is S.E. Hinton, who wrote The Outsiders. 
The next award is Children's Literature Legacy Award. This focuses on integrity and respect for all children's lives and experiences. A recipient of this award is Kevin Hankies, who is well-known and beloved children's author. We have Grace Lynn, a Taiwanese-American children's writer and illustrator, known for contributing to and advocating for Asian-American representation and diversity in children's literature. And to the right, we have Mildred D. Taylor's works of historical fiction about black families in the mid-1900s. The next award is the Robert F. Seibert Informational Books Awards. Informational books with real information that appeals to young audiences. That is the unique characteristic of this award, is that it's all about informational books. It takes into consideration the presentation of the material and the appeal to young audiences. Here we see The People's Painter, Honeybee, and Frybread. Each work is unique in its context, but offers real information that describes the people, science, or factual information. The next award is the Andrew Carnegie Medal for Excellence in Children's Video. This is a unique award that celebrates children's videos with an emphasis on the child's imagination, intelligence, and unique interests in the videos. In the middle, we see Andrew Carnegie himself, and we see some winners on the left and the right. We have Drum Dream Girl, and that is not a good idea. The next word, award that we have is the Mildred L. Bat Bachelder Award. This award focuses on books translated from another language. This is an award that I really appreciate. It has an emphasis given to the authenticity of culture, language, of the culture and language of the original story. So this award itself focuses on a piece of literature from another culture that was written in another language and was then later translated into English. Some examples here, we have Just a Girl by Leah Levy, and this was translated from Italian to English. In the middle, we have Tempe Alley, Sum Temple Alley Summer by Sachiko Kashiwaba, translated from, English to J from Japanese to English. And on the right, we have Telephone Tales by Giovanni Francesco, Gianni Rodari, translated from Italian to English. The next award is the Alex Award. This is chosen for the specific appeal of a work to young readers and adults. There are 10 titles chosen every year. I just chose three titles to show of those 10 titles that appeal to that young audience. We have The Witch's Heart, The 100 Years of Lenny, and Light from Uncommon Stars. Another award that I particularly appreciate is the Pura Belpre Award. This celebrates writers and illustrators that best portray and affirm Latino culture and experiences. This is named after Pura Belpre, the first Latina librarian at the New York Public Library. As a children's librarian, storyteller, and author, she enriched the lives of Puerto Rican children in the USA through her pioneering work of persevering and disseminating Puerto Rican folklore. Some notable works include Frizzy, Where Wonder Grows, and Adriana and, oh, I'm sorry, Where Wonder Grows and Burn Down, Rise Up. All of these works celebrate Latin American culture and unique experiences. The next award is the Odyssey Award. Uh, this award is linked to Homer, the writer, or he who dictated the epic poem called The Odyssey. And this emphasizes that poem that was told and then retold through the oral epic tradition. So this award is awarded to audiobooks. Here we have Stunt Boy, which was read by Guy Lockard, Niall Bollock, and Angel P.N. with a full cast. We have Honeys, read by Pete Cross, and Boogie Boogie Y'all, written and read by C.G. Esperanza. The next award is Mayhill Arbuthnot Honor Lecture. This is a unique award because it is a privilege to host a lecture. This is an honor given to individuals who have made a significant contribution in the field of children's literature. In the middle, we have May Hill Arbuth Arbuthnot, who, for who the honor is given. 
On the left, we have the 2022 lecturer, Neil Gaiman, who is known for his popular children, young adult, and adult books that he has written. And to the right, we have Dr. Debbie Reese, who gave the lecture in 2019 about the representation of indigenous people in children's literature. Then we have our references, primarily the American Library Association and then the many images. And here we're going to look at how to create a quick formative assessment for the presentation. This is a good way of gauging everyone's understanding of the awards. So we can come right here. This will open a Google Forms. And Google Forms already has some pre-made templates from which you can create some kind of formative assessment. I'm just going to click Event Feedback. And here, there's just already some things that are generated. How satisfied were you with the event? How relevant and helpful do you think this was for your job? If I find something that I would like to change, I can quickly just go in, type it, edit it. Some good questions I could have were, what award stood out most to you? What did you find most interesting? Is there anything that's unclear that you would like more illumination on? So based on how they respond to the formative, I can make better decisions about what topics need to be covered more thoroughly, provide further PDs or presentations to illuminate unclear awards, and highlight certain awards in the library that the audience members would like to see more of. I hope that that was helpful.